Well, thank you, church. Uh, good morning. My name is Rob Fisher. I am the program development coordinator at Adult and Teen Challenge, and it's uh, great to be with you guys again. We get to do this every year. Uh, one thing I noticed that um, since we have an earlier start time, where did you go, Pastor Dan? Oh, there you are. Like we can't go to Papa's after church. It's a little, little early still. I also wanted to say that there's nothing weird about having a taco craving. There's nothing weird about that at all. But uh, it's a pleasure to be with you guys. I got a lot of friends here, you know, as, as, as Dan said, uh, seeing, seeing Pastor Dan and seeing my buddy Johnny and uh, people I haven't seen in a while, like, like Ralph. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really cool uh, to be here and, and to see you guys and, and to show off our men and women of Teen Challenge and... and uh, hear some of their stories. It's like it's cool when I go to a place where I have friends because I get to show, show off what God's doing to my friends. So I'm excited to have you guys hear what is going on with our men and women. Uh, listen, one of the things that, that is very clear to me through my life and, and through my doing this every Sunday uh, is that everywhere we go, if I ask for a show of hands, which I won't, but if I ask for a show of hands, Sure, everybody here, or almost everybody here, knows somebody struggling in addiction, or you know maybe you've lost somebody in addiction, you know, or maybe you're in the room and you're struggling with addiction, you know, and that's okay because today could be the first day of something new, because that's also my story. You know, I grew up in churches like this and in pews like this. You know, as as my friends know, I'm a pastor's kid. You know, and I'm not only am I a pastor's kid, I'm a, I'm a my grandfather was a pastor, and I have two uncles that were pastors, and a cousin who's a pastor, and a brother who's a pastor, and uh, and I went to Bible college. I got kicked out uh, second year, uh, so that started, started my journey. But the point is that I, I was raised to know right from wrong. I was raised to know the goodness of God from from you know, from, from the earliest memories, you know, I was given every opportunity to succeed, I was given love, I was given an education, I had, you know, no trauma to escape from, you know, but I still chose my own path, I still decided what was right and wrong, I still abandoned what I knew, uh, and, and that's the thing about addiction, is once you go down on a path, it, it doesn't care about socioeconomic status or or education, or, or race, or ethnicity, or anything like that. It brings us all to the same place. It brings us to our knees. You know, you're going to hear some stories from people who have much different upbringings than I did. You know, um, yeah, but it all brings us to the same place, and it's actually a good place in the end. If if we get there, is that we know that we are dependent completely on the Lord, um, and uh, so that's actually a blessing uh, in the end. You know, and one of the things that we've learned. In addiction is that most of us can get clean, you know, we can get sober, you know, you get the right friend, you get the right group, the right sponsor, you go to a detox or rehab, you know, some of us, you know, most of us have done many of those things, I've been to many of those, and you get a period of time and you're technically sober, you got everything out of your system, and you're technically clean, but the trick is how do you stay that way? How do you stop going back? to the same mess over and over again. And for me and for the men and women behind me, that's what Teen Challenge is all about. That's why we're here. We're not just another uh, detox or rehab where you go and learn some skills and some tools and some, some mantras and some things to help you through rough times. This is a discipleship program. You know, it's a place where men and women go to learn how to serve the Lord so that when we're done with the program, we're not just sober. Or, you know, we are having, we have a purpose, we're on mission, you know, and we're different than when we came in. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about our program, uh, run through a couple slides, and then get into the good stuff, which is some songs and testimony. So uh, I think we have a slideshow. If not, oh, there it is. Next screen, please. Uh, so we are in Lebanon, New Jersey, 88 acres on the side of a mountain. It's a gorgeous facility. I joke that, you know, there, there are more deer on campus than people. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful place to get away from whatever it is that we need to get away from. You know, some of us come from some pretty rough places, uh, but regardless, we're, we're in, a, in, a, in a gorgeous place. Uh, one of the things you don't see on that screen is that there's a house off of one of the driveways there, uh, which is now the home to the women's program. So I wanted to take a second to acknowledge the fact that we have women here with us today for the first time. 
So we finally started the New Jersey women's program back in October. Uh, so they're on campus with us, and it's been just a great opportunity to get that, that program established, uh, start uh, serving the needs of the women in addiction in, in the state, uh, because clearly they need it as much as the men do. You know? uh, so it's great to have them here with us as well. Um, two important things on that screen is you've got a classroom, you've got a chapel, we got a, listen, this is a Jesus program. You know, this is the, the, the beginning and the end of what we're looking for in our recovery is, is a relationship with God. So we have chapel uh, a couple times a week. We have prayer meetings every single night. We have a classroom there where everybody in our program has their own individualized academic uh, uh, curriculum, you know, where we're specifically working on things that uh, are personal to us that we, we might be dealing with. And, and the, the cool thing about that is, you know, I know growing up for me, I read the Bible a lot. And frequently it was kind of in one ear and out the other. You know, I'm reading it. I'm like, I know this is important, but what does it mean? And how, do, how, do I, you know, how do I apply it? But now here we are in a place where we got a life and death, you know, sentence here. We, we, we are, you know, we, we lose people. We have lost people. Many of us have come close to death ourselves. We know that we're in a life and death battle. Now, so now on a daily basis when I'm having a rough day or somebody in our cabin is driving us crazy, we want to strangle them, you know, where we get rough news from home and we want to leave, uh, or we just want to go get high or go get drunk again. We have an opportunity on a daily basis to say, what, what am I learning today? What am I reading in scriptures today that's going to help me honor God in this tough moment and help, help me to go to bed sober today? You know, it's that kind of daily application of scripture, daily application of prayer, daily growth that br brings the character change that we need so that when we're done with this program, we're different than when we came in. Amen? Uh, next screen, please. Uh, so, listen, we're beyond uh, our building our faith and, and, and you know, helping uh, some of us find faith that, that didn't have it when we came to the program. We also provide a lot of services to our guys and, and our women. I'm not going to get to all of them, but a couple I want to highlight. You know, obviously, when we're in addiction, it takes a toll physically. You know, our, body, our bodies are pretty beat up. So if you come to the program, you don't have insurance, we're going to help you get insurance. Uh, get signed up for that. We're going to get you all your doctor's appointments, help you start getting put back together again. And uh, another thing I want to highlight, you know, a lot of us don't finish our, our education. And uh, part of the requirements to graduate from Adult and Teen Challenge is you need to at least have your GED. And if you don't have your GED, we're going to get you signed up for GD classes. We're going to get you transported to the classes and make sure you take your test and you pass your test so that when you leave the program, not only are you serving the Lord, but you're healthy and you're educated and you're starting to point your life in a positive direction. So we want to make sure that we're taking care of the whole person, the whole man, the whole woman. Uh, next screen, please. So when you came in, you saw a couple tables in the back, uh, some cutting boards, which I know you guys are very familiar with. <laughs> uh, but we brought more uh, and, uh, for you to check out. Uh, and the women have some some uh, uh, some items as well. Did you guys bring T-shirts this week? T-shirts and stuff. So please check them out. The the cutting boards. You know, listen, it's a it's a great uh, ministry that we're doing on campus, even to our own guys. It's a vocational training program. Every one of those cutting boards and charcuterie boards are made by the people on this on the stage. Uh, they're learning how to work in a shop. They're learning all the different stations of it. Uh, but the cool thing about this is, it, actually, I'm saying cool a lot this morning. As soon as I got I to get a thesaurus. Um, I can't think of another word other than cool. The neat thing about it is, is um, we don't turn anybody away from our program, regardless of their financial situation. You, know, you can be coming from prison. You can be coming from you know, an abandoned house, uh, living on the streets. And we'll take you in for a year. You know, and uh, you will have a home with us. We can't make that happen without the support of, of folks like you. We are a frontline ministry, literally in the business of saving lives. And it's the support that we get from our church partners that helps us keep our doors open, to help us continue to bring people in. So please consider checking out our, our, our goods after the service. Next screen, please. And when you came in, you may have received a prayer card. Looks like this. If you did not, can you please raise your hand? And one of our guys, prayer card guys, will go down and make sure that you get a prayer card. Uh, and the reason we do this 
uh, is, did you guys have prayer cards too? Or we'll, we'll talk about that later. All right, uh, so the reason we do this is uh, we want to make sure that you know, in, our, in our growth in our uh, walk with the Lord, uh, it's not just about us. God doesn't just save us so that we can go sit in a corner and be okay. You know, we, we are saved so that there's something else comes after that. Uh, part of that is you know, we're going to intercede on your behalf. We have prayer meetings every single night, and we will pray for you. Uh, so please put a prayer request on this card, and we will take a look at this, and we will pray for you. Uh, there's also a place to put personal information if you choose to, uh, even if it's just an email address. It's just a way for us to uh, stay in touch, send you newsletters, and, and, and such like that. So please fill that out. Bring it to any one of us or bring it to our table after the service. Uh, next screen, please. I'm going to come back to the screen a little bit later. So uh, with that, we're going to get into some songs and testimonies. So our first song this morning is going to be Yes, I Will. And Chris, you can take it away. I count on what they, the same God who never fails, will not fail me now. You won't fail me now. And in the waiting, the same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will. Did you hide in the lowest valley? Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will. I count on one thing The same God who never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now And in the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out Yes, I will Lift you high in the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days, yes, I will for all my days, yes, I will. To glorify, glorify the name of all names That nothing can stand against I choose to praise To glorify, glorify the name of all names nothing can stand against I choose to praise To glorify, glorify the name of all names Nothing can stand against, and yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will. Okay, our first testimony this morning is going to be from Anthony. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Anthony. I'm 21 years old. I'm from Galloway Township. Um, growing up, my story starts off, uh, you know, with a cycle. My father passed away at one years old, and uh, as I got older, I went through a lot of abuses from uh, 
different family members that, you know, kind of affected my life in a negative way. Um, from that situation, or those situations, it caused me, you know, seek attention in school, uh, being a bully, a class clown. I started to smoke cigarettes, sitting around my neighborhood, um, hanging around with the wrong crowd in school and in around my neighborhood, just doing a lot of um, adolescent and, um, you know, like hooligan things. Um, growing up in middle school, you know, the same cycle of abuse led me to, you know, go deeper and deeper into the streets, deeper and deeper to, um, you know, just doing wrong with, with my friends. Uh, got introduced to cannabis. Uh, that was, you know, just a gateway into a whole new lifestyle, just crimes, um, violence, and, um, you know, being put on probation uh, later on due to my actions. Um, I got in and out of institutions, and, um, you know, when I got out of institutions, you know, my friends kind of just rewarded me by introducing me to new drugs from heroin, you know, uh, meth, you know, K2, you know, whatever it was. I just wanted to get more and more higher, you know, more and more excitement, more and more pleasure in doing the wrong things because I couldn't find something to heal the damage that I went through as a, you know, as a little kid. And, um, you know, the same cycle of going to institutions, rehabs, being kicked out of the homelessness, finding new drugs to do, um, you know, led me to eventually be homeless at the age of 18. Um, you know, I went to Atlantic City, and that's when uh, crack cocaine became the main addiction and focus point in my life. And whatever I w did was to get uh, crack cocaine, whether it's stealing, whether it was crimes, whether it was selling my own stuff, no matter what it was, was just to get myself higher on uh, crack cocaine. And, um, you know, eventually I started surrounding myself with, with uh, different people, um, you know, older people, and, um, you know, my life was just taken away from, you know, by the streets and uh, crack cocaine. Eventually, you know, in and out of these institutions was just a cycle that I couldn't get myself out of. And um, one thing I focused on was trying to, to join the military. And um, while I was in rehab and focusing on this new goal of mine, a lot of people started to talk to me about God and how you need God into your life and how God can fix your problems. And um, I wasn't really focusing too much on that aspect of it. I was just more focusing on trying to find a long-term program to get myself prepared for the Marines to get my GED and, um, you know, my a high school diploma. Um, just to you know, accomplish that goal. So I chose Teen Challenge because it was the longest program, you know, um, and the most resources to offer me for my goal. Um, but the second I arrived at Teen Challenge, you know, it, it was it was different. It was a different experience. People talking about, you know, God and how He's, you know, truly adding happiness and joy into their life, and truly different conversations to have and different things to do that don't involve drug use or smoking cigarettes or stealing or buying prostitutes, no matter what it was, it was just everything that was different and truly positivity on the right things. And, um, you know, even though there were childhood tribulations, you know, me wanting to leave, God always just asked people in my life to talk to me and tell me the right things, not things that I, I want to hear, but things that I need to hear and truly tell me Bible verses that truly speak out to me differently while I was there. And, um, a verse that sticks out to me the most is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, therefore, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. And the reason that sticks out to me to the most is because all the old things that happened to me, whether it was trauma or abuse, no matter what it, what it is, all of it's gone. Because I did a lot of things to other people that caused them to have trauma and all that stuff. And while God being in my life, not only will he allow me to be forgiven by those people, but for me to forgive the people that um, hurt me. You know? But the new being here is that now that I know Christ, now that I know the Bible, now that I know righteousness, I can truly go down the right path and not be ignorant and, and, and ignore the, um, what God's trying to do in my life and the positivity he wants me to add and spread to other people. Um, thanks for letting me share. Thanks, Ant. Ricardo? All right, please welcome Ricardo. Uh, hello, my name is Ricardo. Uh, I'm 22 years old. Uh, I come from El Salvador. I grew up, I grew up in a Catholic church. Uh, always going there to the job service, serving. Uh, also, I grew up in the most dangerous city in El Salvador, that is seven years ago that I came here. It was technically one of the most, if not the most dangerous country in the world. So I was around drugs, alcohol, all my neighbors, they have party all, all the time. But my family was uh, like a light in that darkness. But when I came here, I forget everything about that, like the Two months that I get in high school, I try weed. I start to go in parties, taking people out of the, the school to make parties at 12 in the afternoon. So uh, I was the bad influence in that moment. Uh, 
I get caught up smoking, smoking with vapes in in the in the bathroom of the, of the school. But what drive me to an IOP was that they get me in abandoned house, uh, our classes smoking weed with a couple of friends, and they put me night like I said in the IOP that, that I met some people there that they introduced me to fentanyl, uh, cocaine, and all that stuff. Uh, and then I get stuck on that. Uh, I was, I always been a big guy. Uh, I was 270 when, when I start to do it and I get to my first, uh, to my first rehab um, 150 in October. So I did the rehab, I cut it, I relapsed one, like one month after, and then I was looking for help uh, in churches, a Christian program, because I knew that a lot of people, they, they converting from, uh, to the Christianity, they, they changed their life, and they talked me about this program, but in Long Island, or Manhattan, I don't know. And, but they didn't help me. I went to the to the detox, and they told me I, I told them to help me to get in this program, and I think that was the best decision in my life. Even if I I I, I doesn't wanted to come here because I said Bible all day. Oh no. <laughs> but I mean, it, it's it's changing my life completely. Thank God. Uh, not just with my relationship with God, I'm getting better in my English, so. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm getting more better. Yeah, uh, and yeah, I, I mean, the verse that I stand is Psalms 20, 25, 15. I put my eyes toward the Lord, he, puts, he shall pluck my feet out of the net, and Thank you for letting me share. All right, good job, Ricardo. Uh, so we're going to hear from Angela next. Hi, good morning. Um, I would just like to open up in a word of prayer first. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to stand up here. Thank you for letting me be sober today. Thank you for pulling me out from where I was, Lord. And I just pray that um, I can glorify you in my testimony, Lord. I'm so incredibly grateful for everything that you've done in my life. And I pray that my testimony gives, um, gives glory to you, Lord. And there's less of me and more of you. So thank you so much. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. Hi, my name is Angela. I've been in this... Oh, <laughs> Sorry. Um, I've been in the program for nine months, and it's not usually how I start my testimony. Sorry. Okay, re re retrain. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the Bible tells us to train your kids up in the ways of the Lord, and when they're older, they will not depart from it. And. I am so incredibly grateful for my mother who did train me up with the word of the Lord and going to church and breathing life and positivity into me. I truly believe that that love has carried me through my program. Um, when I was 15, my mother passed away from cancer. Just after six weeks of being ill, uh, this radically transformed my life. I had to live with my sister and then I lived with my friend and her family my senior year of high school. I went to college, I, then I dropped out of college, and this is about when my 10-year drug, um, drug and fentanyl habit started for the last 10 years. For the last 10 years of my life, I sold heroin and fentanyl, and um, this lifestyle came with very tragic consequences for someone, and this tragedy began to haunt me, where I started hearing voices, I started hearing screaming when I would go to sleep, and what I did for so long, I couldn't do anymore. And I, like what Rob said, like when your tragedy becomes a blessing and I'm so incredibly grateful and I'm sorry that it, the cost that it came at, but God really did use this to reel me in and realize how much that, how far off I had gone and that he was the only answer to, to my prayers. And so in this time of 
sheer panic and just being so scared and the devil having such a tight grip on my life. Um, I cried out to God and I prayed to him just being so scared and he faithfully answered and that's when I walked into the doors of Adult and Teen Challenge. This program has radically transformed my life. I can't say enough how grateful I am for it. He has changed my, I'm so sorry. <laughs> he has changed my purposes, my desires, what I want to do. Giving me the space to grieve the death of both of my parents. And because I just buried myself in drugs for so long that I never had the emotional freedom to grieve the loss of them. And this program is just so truly amazing. I had a meeting with a pastor to do, um, to become a missionary in Panama. And I am so excited for what God is doing in my life. When I say that he has radically transformed my life, I can't say that enough. So the verse I stand on is um, Colossians 1.13, for he rescued me from the domain of darkness and transferred me to the kingdom of his beloved son. Thank you. Thanks, Angela. Uh, so Tim. Why don't you come on down and give us your testimony? How are you guys doing? My name is Tim. I'm uh, 38 years young. I have born uh, the youngest of four kids. I have two older brothers and a sister. I was born in a good family. Uh, I was raised the right way. Um, I was blessed with the ability to play sports my whole life, so I didn't really get into anything bad until college, where I was given a Division I scholarship to play football. Um, and when you play football, um, you pretty much have anything you want given to you if you just ask for it. So uh, that began my 19-year uh, drug addiction. Um, I ended up dropping out of school after my first year of football, went to another school, dropped out of that school, um, almost graduated. And then I ended up meeting a girl who I got engaged to. And um, two months before uh, we were to get married, my mother uh, was diagnosed with cancer and she passed away very suddenly. So um, when that happened, I kind of just like uh, went down a dark hole. Um, I started stealing, I started using. Um, we ended up getting married and moved to Florida um, where um, I was okay for a little while, but if you're looking for something, you will find it. And unfortunately at that time, I was looking for the wrong things. So I ended up get using again, um, ended up getting arrested. Um, and ended up getting divorced in jail after having two kids with my first uh, wife. Um, and then after that, uh, I ended up doing okay for a little while, I ended up meeting a, another girl years later, um, and we had a child together. And um, when my daughter was five months old, I woke up to feed her in the middle of the night, and my wife was uh, just breathing really funny, really differently. I didn't know really what was going on. I knew something was wrong, but I just, like, didn't do anything about it. I put my daughter back to sleep. Um, I just honestly stood there, a little laid there until I fell asleep watching her. And then two hours later, because kids need to get fed every two hours, I woke back up, was feeding my daughter, and this time my wife wasn't breathing anymore. So my wife overdosed next to me when I had a five-year-old daughter. So now it was just me and my wife at the time. Um, and I didn't know what to do, and I went right to drugs. Uh, I mean, I took care of my daughter and everything, but I couldn't stop because if I stopped, then I would deprive my child. Um, so, um, I, you know, a year went by, basically, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, one of my best friends, who I hadn't spoke to in probably like nine years, um, called me and said he's going to fly down to Florida because uh, he had spring break or something like that. He's a teacher. So um, he came, we had dinner together, and then he asked me if I'd like to come back up to New Jersey. Um, I said no. Uh, I didn't want to go. I said, you could take my daughter, but I don't want to go. Uh, the next day, he just called me and said, I bought you a plane ticket. If you don't want to come, I mean, you don't have to, but if you come, it'd be great. So he came, he picked me up. I told him I would give him a week, and then I would just come back to Florida. But once I got to New Jersey, um, I knew I needed to get help, so I went into a, a rehab, um, and I, my daughter was being watched by a family member at the time, uh, and when I was there, I didn't know what to do next, because once I got into the program, I realized I needed more help than whatever 21 days was going to give me. So uh, these guys at Teen Challenge actually came, um, and they did their testimonies, and 
Um, what struck a chord to me was when my man Chris over there on the guitar actually uh, said he had a seven, a five, and a two-year-old kids, and that's exactly what I have. So I just thought that was a message from God telling me that this is the place I needed to go. Um, throughout this whole time of being at that rehab, I actually also had double vision the minute I stepped into there. So uh, I decided I'm going to go there. Everybody told me not to go there. It's a crazy place. You're not going to like it. But I decided that I'm going to do what I need to do what's best for me, and you know, uh, I decided I'm going to do it. So I called them up. And um, thanks to God, the moment that they accepted me into my program, my vision went back to normal. So uh, I thought that that was another sign from God that I was doing the right thing. Um, so I came into the program. Um, at the time, my daughter was still with my family. Uh, and then five days into the program, I found out that my family could no longer watch my daughter. So I had to um, allow the state to take custody of my daughter. Um, so at that point, I just said, yeah, that's not going to happen. I'm going to leave the program. So uh, I decided I was going to leave, and then we have like five pastors on our campus, and every single one of them came one at a time, one at a time, and just told me to stay, stay, stay. All these guys came one at a time, told me to stay, stay, stay. I was like, you know what? Whatever I've been thinking for the last 20 years obviously isn't working, so I'm going to try something different, and I'm going to stay. So I did, and uh, thanks be to God, I get to see my daughter every weekend, every Sunday. The uh, yeah. My, uh, and on top of it, the people who bring my child don't even have to work on Sunday. So uh, the state volunteers their time to bring my little two-year-old daughter to me every weekend, uh, which is awesome. And uh, everybody here on this campus is like amazing to her. Um, so I'm just so blessed to be there. I mean, every day is a miracle that I wake up because I was using drugs for 19 years and I still wake up every single morning breathing, seeing, hearing, feeling, touching, and I don't think I deserve that, so I'm blessed every morning I wake up on this earth. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and the verse I stand on is Psalms uh, 41.2, which is, I cried out to the Lord, uh, and he pulled me out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry bog, and set my feet on solid ground. So, that's all to say. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Uh, so we're going to have one more testimony, but before we do, if you can go back one screen to uh, the dollar a day sponsorship. So uh, one thing I just want to touch on again real quick, um, as you're uh, listening to these stories and, you know, it, it hopefully you respond to our invitation to, to check us out outside and fill out your prayer card. I, if, if there's another way that you're looking to, to, to help this program, I want to bring your attention to our dollar a day sponsorship. This is a fund that's uh, specifically for uh, men and women who have nothing and have no money. They can't pay anything to get into the program. You know, like I said, we don't turn anybody away from a program. It doesn't make it a free program. It's, it's still expensive to house a resident for a year uh, in beautiful Huntington County. So we have a, a program called the Dollar Day Sponsorship Program. We have information at our tables. There's actually a separate form for the women and one for the men. Uh, and if you would consider prayerfully uh, taking on somebody, uh, that would be amazing. You can, we can set that up on a monthly basis. We do a one-time payment. Um, but I can provide all that information for you in the lobby after the service. But I wanted to bring your attention to it and just, uh, just prayerfully consider it. Uh, it's, just a, it's just an amazing way to have a tangible impact in, in this life and death fight that we're having. With that being said, I'm going to have one more testimony. Uh, so, John, can you come on down? Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, before I start, I'm just going to pray. Uh, please pray, uh, too. Uh, don't just listen. Uh, I'd ask, if you're willing, just call out to God that he uh, speaks, that he's able to move. And as always, please, you guys, help me, too. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, um, uh, Father, please, Lord, just uh, move today. Father God, I just ask that you could uh, use me, uh, this broken vessel, Father God, just to bring honor and glory to your Son. Father God, just lift up Christ in the name of him and, and glorify the name of your Son, Jesus. And in his name, in Jesus' name, amen. So good morning, guys. Uh, so I grew up playing basketball. It was my life and my passion, uh, my greatest desire. Um, and uh, I knew at a very early age that uh, uh, I wasn't athletically gifted enough to make it to the NBA, but uh, I was encouraged and confident that I was able to make a small career overseas. 
and uh, professionally and then come back home and, and open up my own training facility. So that was the goal. Uh, it was going to be a life uh, tailored towards basketball, pointed in that direction, and I was good. And uh, uh, by the grace of God, I was athletically gifted enough. Um, and as long as I had basketball, I was good. Uh, whatever was going on in my life, whether, uh, you know, uh, sophomore year of high school, my parents split up, but I was okay. I had basketball. I had my foundation. Um, uh, when I was a senior in high school, my best friend had passed away, and it hurt, but I had basketball. I was good. Uh, at this point in my life, I was, I was never the smartest kid. Uh, I never even read a book at this point in my life, but a uh, horrible student, but because of my athletics, I was able to make it to college, um, and at a university that I was at, I was playing and everything was going great. Life was good. I had basketball. I was good. But then I ended up getting hurt. I had torn my gastrocnemius, which is the muscle that connects the Achilles to the calf. And uh, I couldn't play basketball anymore. And I didn't know who I was. My identity, my foundation that I built my life upon was just gone, taken right there. And I didn't know who I was. And I was scrambling to find my identity, finding purpose, pleasure, passion, what have you, in, in all the wrong areas. Uh, alcohol, pills, women, um, drugs. And, uh, and it was empty. Uh, I filled myself up with those things for as long as I could. But eventually, you know, you come crashing down. And it just led me to a dark depression. And I ended up leaving school. And as I said, I sought purpose, uh, pleasure, and women. And I ended up getting a young lady pregnant. And then I was going to have kids. And this gave me hope. It was a good spark of hope at the time that I needed it. And I was like, this is what I'm going to put my passion in. This is what I can, my life can be tailored towards, uh, drive towards, is being a father, raising up these, these children. Because we were having uh, uh, two kids, John Banford Braxton Jr. and Raina Mae Banford. And uh, we ended up losing the children. And once again, the foundation that I had my life on was taken. And I went right back to what I knew, my, own, my old coping mechanisms. Uh, worse this time. Abusing my uh, Adderall just to make the drugs last longer so I could just stay up for days just, just uh, drinking, smoking, what have you. And uh, it was unmanageable. And eventually a friend of mine invited me to a uh, small little Hispanic church. I was the only... English, uh, only white guy in there, uh, but uh, everyone was from another country, but they were, they were so generous to me, they were so uh, uh, welcoming, and they translated for me, and they helped me, and they helped me understand, they helped me understand the message of the gospel, and I was introduced to, to Christ, and, and, and his word, and, and I went all in, that passion that I had for basketball, that I had, I just, I just went all in on, on God's word. And this led me to just the greatest problem that I've ever faced. I saw my own depravity. I saw how wicked I was. It highlighted my, I'm, I'm not a good guy. Uh, I was a liar, a lustful individual, manipulator. <laughs> and I wasn't good. I saw the, the distance that I had to travel to get to God and I couldn't do it. But this led me to the cross. This led me to Christ. And I learned about this person that no matter what you've done, and where you've been, the faithfulness of our, of our Lord and our Savior, I mean, you've heard it in all these stories. You've had to experience it in your own way because you can't read this book and find out that, you're, that you think there's something in you. No, it, it's God's love for us, not our love for God. He chases us, and he, that's what he did for me found me where I was at, met me where I was at, and pulled me up. And one thing that he's taught me throughout this whole journey is all of this fades, all of this goes. Everything I've held in my hands just, just seemed to dissipate, turn to ash, fall apart. But there's one thing that I've held, and it's the gospel. It's the message of Christ, that relationship. Not just a book, not just words, but a relationship that you can have with a person that comes after you. And even if you run in your rebellion, I was an enemy of God. And he died for the ungodly, all of us. <laughs> and he's given us this gift of desperation that we chase after him and long for him. I've made the realization this is no longer my home. 
As I was praying last night, I realized, Father, I want to see you. I want to be reunited with my master, my savior, my Christ. I want to go home. I want to be reunited with him. But there's still work to be done. There's still a message that needs to be proclaimed to people that need to hear the goodness of God and Christ. And that's what I've committed myself to doing. I've come to Teen Challenge to work out my salvation in fear and trembling, to seek after the things of God, to be grown in the things of God, and whether to work for him, because this is my life now. My life is gone. What I want is gone. Amen. And I'm committing myself to, to doing his work on earth and spreading this word, this gospel, whether that's evangelism, or well, it will be evangelism, but whether that's missionary work, pastoral work, what have you. And Teen Challenge has given me the, the, the rare opportunity to do that. And I'm so grateful for this ministry. I'm so grateful for these brothers, these sisters, hearing these stories. Just what a reminder of the faithfulness of God. You, can't, you don't get faithfulness like this anywhere else but found in Christ Jesus. So thank you guys for, for letting us come here and hearing our testimonies and, and just be encouraged, you know, that, that God's right there with us and, and it's his love that's going to drive you. So God bless you guys. Okay, uh, we have uh, one more song for you. We're going to sing Rescue Story. Uh, please uh, pay particular attention to the lyrics of the song. This is kind of like, a, like all of our testimonies in, in song form. Uh, so just to enjoy the song, please. Up on me, and this is my 
All right, guys, you can be seated. As they're sitting down, let's give them one more hand. Great job, guys. Uh, so I get, the, I get the privilege of doing this every week. You know, I take these guys and these ladies to a different church and uh, let them tell their stories. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the one thing that, that I always want to leave you guys with is this. Is like, we might not all be able to relate to, to these stories. You know, I consider these guys and these ladies the, the rock stars of the testimony world. You know, they have these, these amazing stories that, you know, not all of us were professional level basketball players or not all of us were, you know, dealing drugs or not all of us were in prison, not all of us were homeless, you know. So how do I relate to these stories if I'm sitting here in, in, in this congregation? And, um, and it's this. It's uh, the same God that rescued us, <clears throat> the same God that lifted these guys out of their addiction and, and prison and, and, and life and death situations. It's the same God that you guys are praying to for your families uh, for your situation. So be encouraged because God's still performing miracles. You see a bunch of them up on stage today. Uh, so take that home with you. You know, be, Take hope. You know, you see what God is doing. God is there for you as well. Amen? All right, so with that, I'm going to have Pastor Dan come on back up. All right, let's give it up for Teen Challenge. Come on. And I just want to, uh, I want to thank you for coming today, for taking the time to be here, um, and, and for sharing with us your stories, for being vulnerable, for being open, and, and just you know, honest with us about what's going on in, in your lives. Um, that's love. Like when you're vulnerable, that's loving somebody else. That's saying, I care enough to tell you the true story of my life because I want you to know what God's done in my life. And you're not doing that just, just to build yourself up you, because you want somebody else to know. You care enough to share that. And it's hard to do. I mean, you don't know us. And so I appreciate, thank you for being honest with us and telling us that those are gifts to us. We feel love because you shared that. And like, we're all one family. Right? The kingdom of God, we're all it's one big family. That's the beauty of, of the church, brothers and sisters, every one of us. doesn't matter where we come from. doesn't matter what we look like. doesn't matter what we've done, what we haven't done, what we have, what we don't have. Like Rob said, it's the, the great equalizer. We're all broken without Jesus. doesn't matter what the story was like. I mean, kids hear this, adults hear this, right? Like, you don't have to have done terrible things to still be separate from Jesus. We just, we need him. There's a world out there that needs Jesus. You see in the news what's happening, violence, wars. We were, it's interesting because we were just spending time in Mexico and we went to a rehab center and shared and, and heard from and talked to people in, I don't know, somewhere in Guadalajara that are walking the same journey. They're just trying to find how do we put our trust in Jesus. I just can't do this on my own. Can't do it on my own. So I just want to encourage everybody here. Jesus is our rescue story. Rescue for your family, for your marriage, 
for your health, for your mental well-being, for your spirit. Whatever's going on, this world is rough. It's hard. And there's an enemy that actively does not want you to win. That seeks to keep you from Jesus. And not just you in here, but like as Rob was saying, there's, there's people in all our lives. Siblings, children, parents, friends, co-workers, classmates, people you know. They're struggling right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask like, that God right now would put, put somebody else on your mind. Not just you, but somebody else on your mind. In this moment, you go, God, show them your love. Somehow help, help me to be able to tell my story in a way. It just says, hey, Jesus is the answer. Like you guys, don't, you don't just need to be up on a stage to tell a story. You can tell a story every single day, wherever you go. It doesn't have to be dramatic. It doesn't have to be the whole thing. You can just tell pieces. How did God, what, what did God do in your life yesterday? Talk about that. How do you have hope when you see the news headlines? Talk about that. When you're, when you're afraid, when you're scared, when you don't know what to do, how do you pray? Talk about that. When you don't have answers, talk about that. I don't know how this is going to end, but I'm just telling you, I'm just trusting in God. I don't know what to tell you. That's my story today. You have to make up stuff. But we need to talk about it. We can't just keep that stuff to ourselves. We can't just sit there and go, yeah, I got all these great stories of all these amazing things in our world, and there's people dying and going, I never heard that. I never knew that. I was around you for years. Why didn't you ever tell me? Why didn't you ever tell me that stuff? Why didn't you, why didn't you just, like, like, we're so, the enemy just wants to shut us down, to silence us, and God's saying, hey, shine light in the darkness. Shine light in the darkness. So I appreciate the time that you took to share with us. And I hope that just encourages us, lights us up even more. This matters. There are people in our lives, people we love, people God loves. Everybody is God's child. Everybody's God's child. No matter how busted and broken their mentality is, no matter what's happening, everybody's God's child. And he loves them. And he's sending us. We don't get a pass. It's on us. It's our purpose in life. Make him known. Make his love known. So I want to thank you guys for, for taking the time to be here today and sharing with us. You've encouraged us. You've built us up. You've challenged us. Thank you. And we commit to praying for you. As you pray for us, thank you for the... I love that you guys send out the prayer cards. If you didn't fill one of those out, fill them out. We're going to collect them in just a moment. Ushers, if you can prepare, we're going to receive in just a moment our offering. You can put the prayer cards and, and uh, thank you for praying for us. We need your prayers. We need your prayers as we're walking here, as we're, we're walking among our community and, and our neighbors. We need, we need your prayers for our lives. We're praying for you. It's a two-way street. We're praying for you. You pray for us. It's a good deal. God does the answering. In a moment, we're also going to receive our tithes, which support our church, but we're going to receive an offering as well for Teen Challenge. You can, you can designate on, on your envelope there just Teen Challenge and everything that you give will go to them to support them. I'm going to encourage you. If you're not doing a dollar a day, I don't, know, I don't know how you could better spend a dollar a day. Not much you can get for a dollar a day, but you can change somebody's life and give somebody an opportunity to hear this, to know this. That's a pretty good use of a dollar a day. A dollar does not go far. But in God's economy, oh, man, that's eternity. Make investments in people. So I'm going to encourage you, everybody. I'd love for everybody in our church to sign up for a dollar a day. So we're going to receive that in a moment. I'm going to invite you to stand, and we're going to, we're going to close with a song. And then, uh, and then we'll invite our ushers forward in just a moment. But would you just close with this song?